Divine Truth Interviews Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. Jesus is interviewed by Mary Magdalene on the topic of emotions. The interview was held on the 16th of April 2014 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session one, part one. Well, what we'd like to do now is welcome you to our discussion and frequently asked questions about emotions. Obviously, there are so many things we could talk about about emotions. There are literally thousands of different types of emotions a person can feel. And there's oftentimes many questions, many more thousands of questions that people have about how to work through their emotions and release emotions that are negative, feel positive emotions and so forth. But before we start answering all of these questions with you, what we would like to do is recommend that you watch the series of frequently asked questions called How the Human Soul Functions. It's under the Human Soul series of FAQs. And we suggest to you that you watch the first three sessions of those series of FAQs before you actually go ahead and watch our answers to people's emotional questions. The really reason why we suggest that is because we feel quite strongly that unless you understand how the soul works, you will probably not understand many of our answers about <laughs> the questions about emotions. And also, uh, watching that series will let you know why it's so relevant for you to begin to deal with emotions and why it's so important to, in your progress towards God. Yes. So some of these FAQs will come from seminars, some will come from the media interviews or interviews with individuals, and some will come from the interactions that we, myself and Mary have here in a setting like this. And there will be a complete mixture of all different types of questions about emotions and emotional processing and so forth in this section of FAQs about emotions. So we expect there will be many, many sessions. At this stage, we've got over 120 or 30 questions prepared, uh, which will take us many days to go through, I suggest. And we won't do them all at this week or in the following weeks. But we hope you enjoy our answers to your questions about emotions and emotional processing and other questions associated with emotions and we hope that they help you become more open to your human soul, the, the soul, the being that you are, and also and, more open to God. Yeah. Yeah. And as always, if you would like to send us questions to have um, Jesus or myself answer, you can send them to faq at divinetruth.com. Mm. So we know that a lot of you have questions about emotions, um, but please make sure to watch the videos that we have already um, filmed answers to regarding your topic before you send us more questions because we might have already answered your question. Yes, so we have a group of people that are actually allocating these questions and obviously sometimes we make slip ups and we might finish up answering <laughs> the same question <laughs> twice. Um, but most of the time what we're trying to do is be quite concise with these questions. Some of the questions are quite long because the people have given some explanatory text to them. And so naturally they will be quite long on the website and also quite long in the question part of the question and we have to dissect them, <laughs> which we will, will do through this discussion. So we hope you enjoy this discussion about emotions and also see, start to see through your own aspect of, of, pra of practicing and feeling your own emotions, how important it is in your relationship with God. This question comes to us from Linda. Mm -hmm. And she asks, how do I deal with fear while trying to process through physical pain? <laughs> yes, well, even that is a fear-based question, I suppose. Um, this is the issue that most people have with physical pain. They do not allow themselves to feel the physical pain. They're trying to suppress it before they begin. And the problem for most of us is the reason why we have physical pain is because fear exists already. So, so the problem is we need to allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by both things, both the physical pain and the fear of the pain that we're feeling. Now, most people won't allow that particular process to occur because they feel that becoming overwhelmed with it, become very, they become even more frightened. And, and instead of allowing themselves to feel their fear and mm -hmm. shake and, and, and cry or whatever it is that, was go that is going to be needed to feel the fear of their pain, they try to suppress the fear of their pain, which actually will increase the sensation of the pain yes. rather than reduce it. 
And then, of course, they go and take another option, and that is generally to get some kind of medical form of suppression of the pain. Now, obviously here what we're doing is we're talking about pain that is not like extreme physical pain caused from some extreme accident or sickness or disease. <laughs> like your legs cut off or something <laughs> Exactly. Like that, yeah. We're talking now about pain that is uh, that basically occurs every day of our life mm -hmm. and that seems to intensify under certain conditions and that we often are resistive to feeling. You will find if you allow yourself to feel and experience fear, you will allow the experience of pain and also in the experience of fear, pain will reduce, not increase. Yeah. So if the pain is increasing, it means that you're attempting to suppress your fear of it. And so my suggestion to people is allow the feeling of your fear of the pain that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So that's all I can suggest here without knowing the details of what pain it is and what kind of you know, things being suppressed. From my personal experience, you've helped me a lot with this issue of physical pain mm -hmm. and um, the fear of physical pain. Mm -hmm. And just through once a month, I go through quite a lot of physical pain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it waxes and wanes, but generally when I have my period, I get a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And I used to be trying to sort of survive that pain, I suppose, and endure yes. it. And I would be quite rigid in my fear, really, of of experiencing the pain. Well, I feel you used to you used to do a lot of things besides those two things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So so you tried to survive it. Mm -hmm. You tried to nurse it sometimes, where you, where you would do something physical to t attempt to alleviate the pain itself, yeah. rather than focusing on what may be the cause of such pain. Yeah. And remember, the cause of all pain is the suppression of some emotion. So, so when we're trying to alleviate the pain without fixing the emotion, it's sort of almost counterproductive and counterintuitive. We'd be better off spending our time trying to find what the emotion is that we're trying to suppress that's causing our pain. Yeah. And I find most people are not even using their intellect in that direction. When they're feeling pain, generally they're trying to either get away from it, so they take some kind of pain medication, mm. or what they try to do is suppress the pain using some comfort-based technique, you know, whether yeah. that be food or, you know, a hot water bottle or, yeah. you know, having a nice warm bath or a lovely long shower or some other method that they have to reduce the physical pain rather than allow themselves to feel what the cause may be they, they are already in suppression of the cause. And in fact, all pain is the result of suppression of the cause. Mm -hmm. So if we've got pain, we're, it's already telling us, if we reflect back to how the human soul functions, the pain is already telling us that we don't understand suppression mm -hmm. and that we don't understand resistance. And that there is some kind of preclusive emotion inside of our soul that's that's causing us, that we're in complete denial of, that we're suppressed and, and resisted completely, that has caused our body now to respond to the suppression of that particular emotion. Yeah. And usually it is very much related to the location of the pain mm -hmm. in the body. So for in the case of a woman with her period, it's located in the sexual organs of, uh, you know, the of, reproductive, of the organs. reproductive yep. organs of the woman. So the, the, the pain is a suppression of emotion relating to sexuality or reproduction. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. Yep. Otherwise, there would be no pain. Yep. So, so there, there'd be pain somewhere else. There'd be pain maybe in the tummy or something like that. Yep. If you're suppressing large amounts of fear, you will often have pain in the upper part of your abdomen, you know, around your gallbladder, you know, those kind of issues. If you're suppressing rage, you will often have kidney, liver-based issues that cause suppression of pain. If you're suppressing the emotion of uh, worth, low, low self-worth, you'll often have pain in your lower back. Mm -hmm. and, and your back will have problems. If you're suppressing pain in your shoulder, you're suppressing emotion relating to responsibility, you'll often have pain in your shoulders. If it's your left shoulder, it'll be towards women. If it's your right shoulder, towards men. Now we could go on and on and on yep. about what body area where you're going to have pain if you suppress emotion. But if we understand the general principle, if I suppress emotion, it will result in pain. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a fact. Mm. Right, and we need to have faith in that fact. Yeah. So, if I am experiencing pain, it means I am suppressing something. I am already suppressing it, 
and I need to acknowledge that. Now, when, if we could, we could pray about that, if we involved God in that process, or we could try to use our intellect to find out what it might be that we're feeling, you know, a certain feeling about, and, and try to attempt to feel that emotion. We could do either. But at some point, we're going to have to do that yeah. if we're ever going to be relieved of our pain. Yeah. Yeah. And I... <coughs> sorry. Huh? You, yep. Um, I suppose what you have helped me with, and I... Knowing Linda, actually, and knowing her question and where it comes from, she, she acknowledges that she's in suppression of something and this is the cause of her pain. Yes. And she, but she's feeling like, yep, but I just don't hack it. I want to go and take a Panadol. Yes. Um, so she doesn't want to sit in the pain. Yes. So she doesn't want to sit in the results of the suppression or the suppression itself. Yes. And this is what most people do. We, what most people do with suppression of emotion is they suppress the emotion, which then causes pain, and they don't want to feel the result of their suppression of the emotion, which is the pain, and so they go and find something to suppress the pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is how slimy we are as individuals, actually, you know, from God's perspective. We're, we're always trying to slip out of the, <laughs> the real reason of why something is happening. And pain is always the result of a suppression of something. And we need to acknowledge that it's our desire to suppress. The pain is the direct result of our desire to suppress. Mm -hmm. No other reason. If we didn't desire to suppress, then we wouldn't have the pain. Now, when you go and take a Panadol or some other form of med pain medication, that's the label of the pain medication here in Australia, what will happen is that you're just showing that you desire to suppress more. <laughs> and what we need to do is use our intellect and our will to attempt to find out why we have such strong desire to suppress pain, that's, uh, pain and strong desire to suppress the reason why the pain occurred, which is our emotion about that particular area of our body. Mm -hmm. There's something going on inside that particular area of our body that we have had now a long-term suppressive re relationship with that we're in total resistance of. And because it's been such a long-term problem, it's now exhibiting the problem as pain in our physical form. Mm. And we need to understand that. Yeah. So. To relate um, to my example and how you've helped me, before we met, I would take painkillers once a month. Yes. And while I didn't like that and I thought it was very bad for my liver, that was the only way I could literally get out of bed and function and even then that was like pushing it. Yes. And then when we met and I felt that I, you know, intellectually I wanted to explore divine truth. <laughs> yes. I stopped taking painkillers. I stopped taking any medication yeah. um, for the large part anyway yeah. and um, decided I needed to feel, mm -hmm. decided intellectually that I needed to feel. But what happened was I would still go and get a hot water bottle yeah. and you could feel from me and you might have to help me with this because I, I've shifted something here and I find it hard to articulate. Yeah. But. Um, you would feel from me this feeling of, and I can feel the feeling I had of trying to survive the pain, literally like this, it felt like Almost internally. A, yeah, what it, the feeling that, that it feels like from a per, third party feeling it is a, a feeling of the person trying to, they're terrified of the pain mm. and they're trying to survive it through some comforting means mm -hmm. rather than just, just uh, allowing the pain to overwhelm them and therefore flow through them. Yes. And it's the suppression of the flow of the pain that actually causes more pain. So it actually increases the amount of pain the person experiences. And this is my experience, exactly yes. what you described. So we had a discussion, just simply one discussion about this once. And I realized I was trying to do this and I decided to experiment with just Breathing. Sort of surrendering to the pain. Yes. Just the, a, instead of trying to, or it felt like emotionally go like this towards the pain. So rejection of the pain. That I would go into the pain and I hate using these airy fairy ways of, or so it was esoteric a, it, ways of. It was a, a uh, desire to feel it instead. Yes. So you allowed yourself to actually soften to the feeling of it. Exactly. Yes. And in doing that, my pain reduced. And, and sometimes it, disappeared. Sometimes totally disappeared or yeah. would be there, what, what I would usually experience for 36 hours would be there for one hour. Yes. And so that H can... However. That's, 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 that's where however. I'm going. Yes. The however is, 
the actual pain still appears every month. Yes. Which is an indication that there is still the suppression of the emotional cause. So while now you are accepting the pain and you are allowing the feeling and experience of such pain, there is still the disallowance of the feelings associated with its emotional cause. Now in your case, you know that the emotional cause is associated with many events in the first century relating to sexuality and also relating to um, child childbirth birth. and also Being the torture of your death. And my death and, and so many things. There's many emotions involved that you are going to need to allow yourself at some point to, um, to actually experience and at the moment you are still resistive to experiencing those emotions and so the pain still occurs or reoccurs every yes. month. However, now that you know that if you resist the pain it makes it worse, you are now not resisting the pain and so you find it goes away within an hour or a few hours instead of there being days and days and days of, of large discomfort where you're almost bedridden or are bedridden, um, you now have only an hour or a few hours where you feel that way and, and you know that you've got to focus back on the yeah, pain I and feeling the pain again. I, I spend that time, you know, I, and have intellectual acknowledgement of the causes, yes. but allowing that pain. And um, I'm very aware that obviously I'm still suppressing the causes, otherwise the pain wouldn't exist. Correct. Um, but this process of even just allowing the surrender to pain or, or whatever I'm calling it, yeah. um, has reduced my fear of all physical pain. Yes. And I suppose that Linda's question was, how do I deal with fear while trying to process physical pain? Yes. Um, so can you see that what's happened is that you've reduced your fear of physical pain, but your fear of emotional pain still remains. It's still quite high. And while our fear of emotional pain is present, it will prevent us from actually going through the process of not creating pain. Yes. So in other words, we will always create pain while we fear the emotional pain. We'll create physical pain when we fear the emotional pain. So the secret now is to go through this process of working through your fear of emotional pain, which you mm -hmm. know you've been doing for many months now. And it's the fear of emotional pain which is the main cause of the physical pain. Yeah. And, and we need to understand these relationships if we're ever going to stop them from occurring. Now, once we understand that it's our fear of emotional pain that's actually creating our physical pain, it tends to suggest that our emotional pain uh, is far greater in our mind mm -hmm. and far more uh, terrifying in our soul to feel than the physical pain is even, because we're prepared to feel the physical pain rather than feel the emotional pain. Yeah. And I find this is an interesting aspect about many of us, is that because we have shut down our souls so much and we've shut down the expression of, of, our, of the emotional pain so much, of course our bodies are going to revert to displaying to us the pain that we feel emotionally as a physical symptom. Mm. And and this is a actually loving thing God has done. God's basically saying, look, there's the one level of or layer of resistance that you've placed in, and that is your emotional resistance to feeling emotional pain. And when you do that, you start getting physical pain. So this is now telling you there's the second layer. Now you have another layer of choice. Are you going to also, <laughs> are you also going to, it's like, completely suppress the physical pain or are you going to acknowledge to yourself, ah, this is, the, you know, this is all caused because I have decided to suppress my emotional pain. Mm. And, and once we become more self-responsible, we start going, well, I actually, I don't want to keep going to this physical pain all the time on a regular basis. What I need to do instead is feel the emotional pain that creates it. Once you choose to do that, the physical symptoms will, if you find the, the emotional pain that caused that problem, the physical symptoms will completely disappear yeah. and the, the body itself will repair any damage that was done to that part of the body after the physical symptoms have disappeared. So you're saying really that it's a question again of our will? 
Yes. And a softening to and a desire to find our emotional pain that is the cause. Correct. But also, using my example, there is a process of even softening to physical pain that many of us are resisting. Yes, and also seeing the relationship. Between the physical pain and, and the, the emotional, emotional pain. pain. Exactly. Yeah. Most people don't do that. Most people are completely disconnected from the relationship yeah. between the physical and emotional pain. The physical pain is the effect of the suppression of the emotional pain. And we need to understand this relationship. This is one relationship that the majority of people on this planet do not understand. And so it's natural that many of us have grown up with a complete disconnection to this relationship. Mm. But we need to have some faith that this is the relationship that we uh, have to become aware of. And in fact, God has created this way in love of us. So that, so that we, God, God's saying to us, look, you suppress this emotional pain you have and this physical pain is the consequence of the suppression of the emotional pain. And now you've got two types of pain. Yeah. And what I'm basically showing you is that if you suppress emotional pain, you not only have emotional pain, but you now also have the additional physical pain as a result. Mm. And he's trying to show you that suppression is not the way to go, <laughs> right? So we talked in how the human soul functions about suppression. Yeah. And a person needs to learn about suppression. But that one of the things they need to learn about suppression is that it is not the solution to any problem. Yeah. And this is something that God is trying to teach everybody on this planet. Suppression of a problem and suppression of the effect of a problem is not the solution to the problem. The only way to solve a problem is get to its cause. And the cause of physical pain isn't some kind of malfunction in your body. It's caused by, although, you know, that could be, there is a malfunction in your body to yes. cause physical pain. But that's an effect. But that's of, the effect yeah. of a cause which resides within your soul that's emotional. Mm. And there is something going on emotional that has caused you, that, that you now have suppressed, intentionally suppressed, that creates the physical pain. And if the physical pain becomes chronic and it becomes like part of your life, it is because you are willing to make the emotional suppression a part of your life yeah. of that particular emotion that causes the physical pain. Now, in this discussion, it's, it's impossible to say what emotional suppression causes what disease because there's literally thousands of diseases on this planet, all of which, and pains and aches and all sorts of problems, which are caused by different suppressions of different emotions and that is identical in each person. So, for example, if you, through the suppression of an emotion, which is related to wanting to get approval from mothers, and you feel a lot of anger with your mother, but you want to suppress that, and you want to, through addiction, get lovely feelings from women, you will probably get cancer in your right breast at some point in your life mm. right now there is a direct relationship of every person who has cancer in the right breast to that emotion your right breast or your left breast uh, sorry left breast yeah. left breast because it's your mother yeah. but yeah left breast there's a direct relationship between everybody who has cancer to that emotion mm. every every single woman who gets cancer in her left breast has that emotion Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is the beauty of the way God's done things. It's not based on your personality as to why you get a certain disease. Mm. <laughs> it's not based on some kind of individuality that you get a certain disease. It's the direct result of the suppression of specific emotions yeah. that cause specific diseases. And specific accidents even are caused by the same kind of suppressions. Once we understand this relationship, we start not looking at, well, oh, what's this and what's that? We start acknowledging that we are in suppression which is essential. So we first need to acknowledge that we are suppressing our emotion. That's the reason why we've got this physical pain. This is why we've got the physical disease. This is why we've got the physical problem. And running to a some kind of medical solution to that, while it may relieve the symptoms, it does not relieve the cause, and so therefore the symptoms are going to continue to be created. Mm -hmm. What we need to do instead is go back to the fact that we are suppressing an emotion and the pain in the, the location of the body is directly related to the suppression of the emotion that causes a physical problem of the flow of energy in that part of the body. And we need to understand that. And once we start understanding that, we give up the concept that suppression is the answer. Yeah. We start going, okay, 
I'm just causing my own pain. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm causing my own diseases. Yeah. I, I'm now starting to take responsibility for the fact that is that is my choice to suppress. And remember, in the how the human soul functions, we say we said that the choice to suppress was pushed upon us usually by our environment. So mm. we're not condemning the person for a choice to suppress, but we're saying you're willing to choose to maintain the suppression, and that's what's causing this damage to your body. Yeah. Stop that and the damage to your body will cease. That's the reality. Mm. And so that's the secret to dealing with all the pain yep. and with regard to fear. Well, fear is a separate emotion altogether. Fear is an emotion that is not even real in many cases. Oftentimes we fear things that are not real. They have been real in our past, mm -hmm. but they are not real right now. So, so for example, a, a woman who's been raped, for example, who then starts having problems with her reproductive organs in terms of pains uh, at different times, she don't necessarily be raped again, but she is probably afraid of that thing. Yeah. And she is also afraid of feeling all of the feelings associated with her rape. Mm -hmm. And that is what is causing her to now have pain. So my suggestion to her would be allow yourself to go through the feelings of rape. I know it's very, very difficult. I have been raped, you have been raped. We both know that it's very, very difficult to go through those emotions, but you need to allow yourself to go through those emotions if you're ever going to be, you know... Free of free pain of or pain. free of emotional pain. Anyway. Yeah, free of yeah. emotional pain. So, so this is a very, very essential thing to do and allow yourself to do. And, and what we'd recommend then is to start seeing fear as just a feeling. Mm. It is not the end of your life. It is not the end of your existence. It's not the end of all things. Yep. It is just an emotion that you need to allow yourself to fully feel. Yep. And when you do that, without judgment, you will feel it. And then, of course, the fear of feeling emotions will dissipate. Mm. And then, of course, you will start feeling the different emotions. Yeah. Yep. So when we're having difficulties enduring or coping with physical pain, there's a number of things that we need to work through. One is our resistance to just allowing ourselves to experience the pain. Correct, because we, because we shouldn't be enduring it, we should just be allowing it. Allowing it, it. Yes. yes. But it is that state of like feeling we can't bear it or can't cope with it that causes us to seek out some other solution, solution isn't it? Yes. So that's the first issue. Yeah. And then there's So this now we're working back, by the way, yes, aren't we? Yes, we're going so back. So we're going backwards from our physical pain. Yes. Our physical pain is the long-term effect of long-term <laughs> suppression of long-term fear of emotion. Exactly. Right. So if I'm here today mm -hmm. in a lot of physical pain, yep. the first step is to allow the feeling of the physical allow pain. Allow the feeling of the physical pain and not try to run from it. Correct. And that not so magically actually makes the pain reduce. It does. Um, but it will return. Of course. Because unless we are ready to feel the next step. The next step. Which is allow yourself to feel that you want to suppress an emotion. Yeah. The feeling, the desire to suppress. And so it's the feeling, the desire of wanting to suppress that is actually even the next step we can take while we're still in the physical pain. Correct. We know intellectually, well, this is here because I have a long-term suppression of an emotional pain from yes. what you just said. Yep. And so um, now that I'm in the physical pain, I know intellectually where that's the cause, I might not know even the specific emotion I'm suppressing, but I know it comes from that. Yeah. So obviously I'm going to need to work through my resistance to feeling uh, and my desire to suppress and yes. begin and to feel that emotion. And that's all about your beliefs about suppression. You think that suppression is going to work when it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. You think that suppression is the way to use your soul. It's not the way to use your soul. The human soul doesn't function with suppression very well at all. And so you need to understand a lot of the truths about suppression. And that's really where this preclusion concept that we also talked about comes in, isn't it? While we have the belief inside of us that suppression works... Then we're going to be precluded from taking any action <laughs> against suppression. Yeah. yeah. So we have to emotionally connect to that. Correct. Progress through emotionally. And many of us need to connect to the emotion that of... I want suppression to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like there's, there's this feeling of anger in us, many of us. I want suppression. I want to be able to suppress. Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? I want it to work, you know. And we need to feel that anger that we have mm -hmm. about the fact that, no, we weren't created this way. We weren't created for suppression to actually work. We were created for it to not work, in mm -hmm. fact. 
And once we get through that anger and resistance to suppression, we then realize that suppression is a useless tool that we're attempting to use that has no positive effect whatsoever aside from causing more pain. Yeah. And, and once we come to acknowledge that emotionally, and we will probably cry a fair bit to acknowledge that emotionally, then it's highly likely we'll be willing to get to what is the actual individual emotion that causes pain in that location of my body. Mm. And that might be anything. It depends, it depends on where the pain is in your body. You know, from your head to your toe, there's different pains that could, could be caused by different uh, uh, suppression of different emotions. So that could be almost anything we could discuss there. But the key is to go through that process of firstly, no longer trying to deny the pain and accepting it and feeling the, feeling the pain itself, then going into this next state where we realise it's all about suppression, going through our resistance to, not, to, to, to wanting to continue. Yeah. We, we want to continue suppressing, so we're resistant to not suppressing anymore. We need to go through that emotion. And then we realise the truths about suppression and how suppression is actually a damaging thing to us, damaging thing to our soul. That's a wonderful state to get into once mm -hmm. you realise that. And then once you get beyond that, you'll start looking at the resistance you have to that specific emotion, emotion. that causes that specific pain. Yeah. Great. And you can't skip over any of those mm. states generally. <laughs> no. if, if you've created the pain, then you're going to have to uncreate it through this process. Yeah. And yeah. That, I've, that's a great point that you make because I know a lot of people think, I just got to get to the causal emotion and then it, then all this pain will disappear and I'm going to do it in the next 10 minutes while I'm in the pain. And <laughs> Highly really, unlikely. It's really unlikely that you're going to be able to do that because you've yeah. suppressed so long that you've the generated created pain. pain. Yeah, so it's a chronic problem. Yeah. If, it, if, it got, if it gets to the state where you're feeling pain as a result of it, it's a very bad problem. You know, and I still have some very bad problems in my own body, particularly in my you know lower back bowel region because of uh, worth issues, and and it's been a chronic problem all my life. I had a pro you know, it was a problem when I was a two years of age, yeah. and and this is usually the result. Uh, you know, it's a, a lo long term pains that you're trying to undo, and it does take time to get to them. Many of them are uh, are emotions that we have heavy resistance with, that we don't want to feel because they feel like they just too hard to feel mm. and we need to even work through that emotion and this is the beauty of having a relationship with God we can eventually grow our faith that actually any emotion can be experienced as long as we have God with us going you know helping us through the experience and once we start getting to that state we are much more readily open to experiencing and being overwhelmed by our emotion in any direction yeah yeah, yeah. so that's basically the process we need to go through to address the pain and the fear of our pain. <laughs> Fantastic. So hopefully that's helped, Linda. <laughs> this is a question from somebody else. Mm -hmm. I feel blocked. Is it terror blocking me? Is it a matter of time? If I keep on feeling anxiety and fear, more anxiety and fear, will tears finally come? Mm. Well, let's look at this matter of time thing first, shall we? Because yeah. uh, we need to dissect this question a little. No, it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of will. <laughs> so yeah. so uh, we, we often hear people saying, oh, it's just time, extra time. I need more time. Mm -hmm. Eventually it will come. No, it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of your will, how you exercise your will. That determines what happens here. And while you may need time to develop your will, mm -hmm. which is definitely true, you don't need to wait to some mysterious <laughs> and magical moment, <laughs> which will never occur actually, yeah. for you to feel into your emotions. Yeah. And the tears will not finally come if you believe it's just a matter of time. What will happen is many years will pass and eventually you will pass. Mm. <laughs> and you'll still be waiting for the time for you to feel your emotions. So my suggestion is to not do that. For a person who's struggling to feel their emotions, particularly if they know grief is, a, is there or any other emotion is there, the better course of action is to acknowledge that they do not wish to feel it and to be honest with themselves that they are allowed to not to wish not. to feel it. Yeah. They're allowed to take that opportunity that God's given them through the free will, the gift of free will, to not feel the emotion. 
they would also, if they were honest with themselves, acknowledge that that's probably going to cause some problems in their future if they still retain that viewpoint. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do they really have a desire to feel? Now, most people, if they're honest with themselves, would have to, I would suggest, they would have to see eventually that they probably don't have strong desire to feel. The, the tears themselves, which are going to be painful, or the fears that cover their tears, mm -hmm. the different things they are terrified of uh, about feeling emotion. And, and we have to develop our will somehow to get out of suppression resistance to dealing with emotion itself. So I would suggest to any person who feels blocked that you have a large suppression of, the de of a desire to deal with any emotion. And my suggestion to you first would to be to feel about your emotional belief systems around why you believe suppression and resistance should be your cause of action. Mm. And many times you will feel large amounts of anger and rage when you go through these kind of emotions. Anger with God, anger with you know, how God designed you and all these kind of things. And eventually you'll get to a point of surrendering to the fact that God designed you this way. Yep. Now, once you get to the point of surrendering to that, you now have the opportunity to examine the individual points of why you suppress and why you resist your emotion, because that is the causes of blockages to all of your emotions that are causal. Mm -hmm. And so the next layer then becomes examining your addictions. So you need to now say to yourself, okay, I am a master at blocking my emotions, so I must have a lot of addictions in play that help me keep my emotions suppressed. Yep. And now it's a matter of seeing those addictions in your day-to-day -day life and wanting to become aware of them. And again, that is an exercise of your will. will. <laughs> so while you resist seeing your addictions, you will never feel your emotions. And you need to see that. There is a direct correlation between you wanting to retain your addictions and your inability to feel emotion. Because addictions are all about suppressing emotions and getting emotions that help you suppress other emotions. So you need to be honest about your addictions. So this requires self-analysis, self, some kind of self-awareness. And though, so that now is an exercise, again, of the will to go into this age of wanting to see your addictions. Mm. Now, once you've exercised your will and wanting to see your addictions, you'll probably end up with a very long list <laughs> <laughs> of all of your addictions. And physical pain in your body is an indication of all of your addictions. They are all the areas where you're suppressing the emotion associated with, with, the, with causal emotion. So, so now you've gone through your addictions, you're looking at your addictions, and you become aware through the process of face it, focusing and feeling the addictions. Remember, this is a feeling process, mm -hmm. not an intellectual one. Mm -hmm. You need to feel every addiction that you have. Every desire you have to suppress something has to be felt, right? And then the reason for such a desire to suppress will be felt. Mm. Once you do that, you will start getting into this state of feeling some of the fears mm. associated with your addictions. Every fear you suppress creates an addiction. So every time you try to get away with feeling something because you're afraid, you will create an addiction to help you suppress the emotion that you need to feel. So then you start feeling your fears. And fears are all sets of emotional beliefs, all created usually between the age of, uh, of, of our, our um, conception, conception and seven years of age. Usually they, all of our fears, emotional fears, are firmly entrenched by the age of seven. And we are going to need to go back in our memory, this will help us, to access events in our life that caused us to believe that suppression is the way of life mm -hmm. and resistance to feeling emotion is the way that we need to live. And we need to feel them. We'll need to feel those events. So we need to remember the events and allow ourselves to feel them. Now, obviously, this is going to take time. 
it's not going to happen overnight mm -hmm. and it's going to take time as well in the sense that we're going to have to give it time see most people don't give it time yeah. what they do is they go oh I've got, I, I, you know I've got this and I've got that and I've got this but they still work 40 hours a week they still like the rest of the time go out and play soccer do this do that watch telly do all these other things you know mobile phone TV videos <laughs> you know, all these different things and in the end they're left with one hour a week for themselves to to examine themselves now I suggest to you if you do one this one hour a week yeah you're going to feel like 10 years later you're still going to feel you'll not have accomplished much yeah because it takes a lot of emotional focus to actually allow yourself to become conscious of what's really going on within you mm. with regard to your emotions and if you ever want to be at one with God you have to do it yeah you have to do it to become at one with God you don't have to do it to have a semblance of a life but you also need to do it if you ever want to have a purely happy life you're going to have to do it at some point and what we find most people do at that stage is they go oh, I don't want to do it now I haven't got the time to do it now but to be frank you make the time to do it now because it's the most important thing because if you don't do it now every aspect of your life is going to be the result of the suppression everything you do is going to be a complete result of what you're suppressing yeah so I'd suggest to people look stop thinking that suppression is your answer because it is not it is not the way to happiness you are never going to get complete happiness using suppression what you're going to need to do is go through this gradual process which is going to require an extreme exercise of your willpower to get down to the facts of your life mm. and you are going to need to do this with God's help and the help of your guides you are going to need to do this for yourself and you're going to have to develop a desire for yourself to do it yeah. no one else can is responsible there are people that can help you but none of the people who can really help you will ever take responsibility for you to do it mm. for, for off of you to do it and also if they feel that you're not responsible they won't help you yeah. <laughs> if they truly love you they want you to see your personal responsibility to do it first now that means taking action of all kinds talking about your feelings and emotions talking about your childhood but also um, uh, writing about it reflecting upon it spending this personal time so that you eventually get access to these emotions that you're suppressing and blocking yeah so this is the process that I suggest to anybody who's blocked these are the actions you're going to have to take if yeah you ever want to get beyond your blockages and it is not a matter of time it is a matter of how much you use your will and how much you're willing to spend time doing that <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a matter of time magically that these things will occur these things will only occur if you have a very definite exercise of your will in that direction mm. The only way I have ever personally progressed is by an extreme exercise of my own will. Yeah, yeah. Mm. If we go back to the question, perhaps, mm -hmm. um, because, and it's hard to know because these questions have come to us from all over, over a long period of time. So it's hard to know exactly what this person is meaning because it does contradict itself a little bit. Sure, certainly. So if we go back over it, yes. the first <laughs> statement is, I feel blocked. Yes. And then the next statement or the next question is, is it terror blocking me? Yes. And you've just gone. It's a whole series of things blocking her. Yeah. You've gone yeah. through this. Um... Blocked is the final state. And backwards from that state are, is belief systems, suppression and terror, yeah. fear. But, but before fear, addictions. Yes. You know, so back, if we go backwards, there's, there's the block state, the result. And if we go back, there's a whole series of things blocking you, not just terror. Yes, so it's, it's addiction. It's oversimplifying things to say it's just terror. Yes. And then, and then the question sort of changes a little and says, is it a matter of time? If I keep feeling anxiety and fear, more anxiety and fear, will tears finally come? And you've said it's definitely not about time, it's about will. Yes. But then. The, but then there's the second half of the question. It's hard to know. Is, is, are they saying, are they. It contradicts itself. If we're blocked, we're not feeling anxiety and fear for a <laughs> Probably start. Probably not. No. However, see, most people believe they're feeling anxiety or fear when all they're doing is living in anxiety yes. and fear. 
Yeah. And I'd suggest that this person is living in an anxiety and fear rather than feeling anxiety and fear. When you feel anxiety and fear as a causal emotion, it dissipates, it goes away. If you're living in anxiety and fear, it's with you every day. It, seems it never to go goes on away. It goes on and on and on. And, if, and I, so I would suggest this lady, is, I think it's a lady, who is not feeling her anxiety and fear. She is living in her anxiety and fear. And that's really important, isn't it, for yes. people to come to understand this difference between living in an emotion, which is basically having a sensation of the emotion and then acting in every way to prevent that emotion overwhelming us. Correct. Which is very different from having a sensation of the emotion and allowing it to overwhelm us. And going through and the experience. going through it. Then exactly. we're feeling it. And in the first case, we're living in it. Correct. And so if we're feeling, oh, I'm anxious and afraid, I'm anxious and afraid, but we're always acting to allay that, yeah. um, then we can't really say we're feeling it. No. And we will feel blocked. Of course we'll be blocked. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we need to differentiate here, of yeah. course, between the feeling of an emotion, which is actually a relieving process, mm -hmm. and the suppression of the feeling of the emotion and living in it instead, yep. which is the day-to-day -day living with the emotion. It's like day-to-day -day living with pain. It's yep. the same thing. It's caused by suppression of the emotion. It's caused by not feeling the emotion. So when we day-to-day -day live in fear and we day-to-day -day are anxious, we are not releasing the emotion. So we're not experiencing it. We are taking actions to try and alleviate it. We're taking addictive, we're doing addictive things in our day-to-day -day life to attempt to alleviate the experience of it. Now, any sadness that we feel in that state is only rebellion. Mm. It's a rebellion against having to feel the emotion. Yeah. Right. Right. So we have a cry that we have to, that we feel sad, that, that we feel anxious every day, but that's not feeling why we feel anxious every day. Mm -mm. So it requires far more exercise of our willpower to get into why. Mm. And that requires far more self-analysis than just going, oh, I'm blocked, yeah. you know, uh, is it because I'm terrified? Yeah. You know, the reality is if you're truly analytical in terms of not analytical intellectually, but you're actually, you're desiring to know, by now a person who's blocked would know. Yeah. If they desired to know what was causing their blockages, they yeah. would know. Yeah. God answers the questions of sincere individuals. So every person who's sincerely asking a question, if there's a question is, is it my terror that's causing my blockages? Uh, the, God would already be answering that question, yeah. right? And, and in most cases, it's not terror that's causing the blockages. It's addictions that are causing the blockages. And it's the terror or the lack of wanting to feel the terror that causes the addictions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so most of the time our blockages are directly caused by our desire to remain in addiction with the world. Yeah. 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 And this is something that many of us need to address. Mm. And an important distinction to recognise that many of us f feel our experience of feeling emotions um, has just, for a lot of us, because we live in so much suppression, has really just been yeah. a, a weak sensation of that feeling. Correct. Uh, yeah. When actually, when we use our will in this way, we're going to feel things in a much more overwhelming and intense way. Exactly. Yeah. So what I would suggest to such a person, there's mm -hmm. quite a few videos we might suggest besides the human soul yeah. frequently asked questions, is uh, to actually perhaps watch the videos that we did in the in the assistance group in the USA in 2013 where yep. we talked about addictions yes. and how addictions cause us to suppress emotionally. Uh, it's great for them to watch that particular, those sections of videos. We're also starting, we started up this year a series of videos which we haven't completed yet all about emotions and the essential things that we need to understand about emotions mm -hmm. which we started down in Kentucky and New South Wales and that was in February of this year. So I would suggest the person finds those two sets of videos, yes. uh, there's quite a lot of material there, yeah. and actually looks through and sincerely asks themselves what do they think is the cause of their own blockages. Mm. Yeah. We need to take responsibility for the fact that we create our own blockages. Yeah, and that this, this beautiful thing that you said at the beginning, that it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of will. will. And yep. a lot of us 
go on just waiting for things to get so bad that suddenly we deal or we have magical thinking that somehow it's going to magically pop out of us. Exactly. When really you're saying it's very much about how we exercise our will and coming to grips with that, that we're responsible for that yeah. is, a, is a big issue. Yes, most of us want a magical solution. We do. We, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, the majority of us want a magical solution. We don't want to have to exercise our will to feel an emotion in order to cure ourselves. We want Jesus to come along and cure us. <laughs> That's what we want. And it doesn't work that way. The very first thing I had to do myself in the first century is learn how to cure myself through this process of understanding my own soul and how God created it to function and then working through the layers of any resistance that I might have had to that functioning. And I had to get myself out of, through that state to actually understand and get into a state where God's love could throw through me and then cure, help cure other people. Mm. But even then, I couldn't cure other people indiscriminately. I could only cure them if they had the same attitude of wanting to find the underlying reason for why they created the you know, what was the cause within them for their own illnesses and diseases. Mm -hmm. so, so you've got to be very careful with what you presume here. Everybody seems to want a magical solution to addressing things like blockages and why they're, why they're emotionally blocked and so forth. But the real solution is being sincere and pure in your desire to come to God's love and therefore work through any resistance within you that causes you to be out of harmony with that. That is what is going to cure every problem. And if, if that's not happening, if you're blocked from that happening, it's because no sincere desire really exists yet. Yeah. And we need to understand that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And work through the reasons why no desire exists. Yeah. Work through, find the reason. Be sincere about that instead of just hoping that some magical solution with some magical answer and some magical person will come <laughs> along and do it all for you, because that is not going to happen here or in the spirit world. Yeah. Now that you have many helpers, but all they can do is work with your desire. Mm -hmm. they, can work, they can only work with your will. Yeah. They can't force you into feeling some emotion that you don't want to feel. And God will not force you into feeling emotion you do not want to feel. And unless you're really ready to feel the emotion you don't want to feel, you're going to remain blocked. So somebody's going to have to exercise <laughs> their will here. And the only person who has control of your soul is you. Yeah. And so it's going to be your will that has to be exercised to change. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's such an important thing that God wants us to learn. And it's really about becoming the full expression of our personality, isn't it? Yes. Embracing our will and understanding it and using it and, yes. and coming to love that it is ours and yes. that we can make choices. And, yeah. and, and understanding that everything that is happening to me is the expression of my own will in some way. Yeah. I need to come and see, I need to go and see that and take responsibility for that rather than trying to think that somebody else will come along and rescue me from, from having to go through those particular things. There, there is no, it is not loving for someone to rescue you from what is your intention. You know, even if your intention is exercised in a direction that causes your own pain, mm -hmm. it's still not loving for someone to rescue you from that. It's loving for someone to try to assist you to see the need to change but it's not loving for someone to come along and just change you without your will being involved. Yeah. So we all need to exercise our will more positively if we ever want to find our blockages and work through our emotions properly. And like I said, it's been, I've had to exercise an extreme amount of willpower to get to some of my emotions. And to be honest, I've yet to exercise <laughs> enough willpower to get to some of them. Yeah. And this is why I'm still not in that pure condition again. And so, you know, it does take a lot of effort, a lot of time and a lot of sincere desire to be developed before you can actually get to that state. Yeah, and I suppose I have the privilege of living with you and seeing how um, dedicated you are to that process. Mm -hmm. And I often um, feel that a lot of people have this expectation of you to be perfect as Jesus or that you're somehow special or it's somehow easier for you or... Um, that it's somehow the rules don't apply <laughs> or that it, just because you're Jesus, God loves you better and so it's easier. And, uh, and that's not the case at all. No. In fact, I face many more extreme emotions than the average person faces. 
along with 2,000 years of memory that I've got to process. And so it's often very, very difficult to go through different processes for me emotionally, but I exercise my will to do so. And that's what I see, that you take it seriously, you practice very firmly what you preach. Mm -hmm. you, if you are aware of something within yourself, you don't make excuses for that, you don't try to avoid that, or if you do, you're honest about that also. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly when there's issues affecting your love of others, you take that extremely seriously mm. immediately and mm. um, even my love of environment and, and animals and birds and other creatures yeah it take very seriously yeah. yeah and so I I am witness to how much will is required and I'm still growing that desire to have my will developed that much that it becomes my number one priority in every moment yes. to grow in this way and yes. to honour the principles of how the soul functions really. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the way I see it for my personal life is that I feel the primary reason why I came here was to demonstrate from this condition of sin or the condition of emotional error, if we can call it that, condition of emotions out of harmony with love, mm. what I, I wanted to demonstrate how to get from that condition back into at one with God. So I sort of see it almost as my work, if you like. <laughs> so, so it's my primary job. job. <laughs> um, not that I see it as such, but uh, it, it's sort of like, I do see it partly like that because it, it feels to me like, what's the point of coming here and going through this experience again um, and losing a lot of the things that I had before then to come here um, if I'm not going to come here for the purpose I came here. Yeah. And so I, I'm very focused on it. No, this is something that the earth needs to know about. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it, it will solve so many of individuals and collectively, it will solve so much of the earth's problems if people understood how to do it and they need someone to show them how to do it. Um, so, so that's why I want to do it because yeah. I, that's one of the reasons, not the only, and it's not my primary reason, mm -hmm. but it's one of the reasons is a, as an act of love towards others to show them what to do. And what I'm suggesting to all of the people listening to this question is that you are going to have to develop a extreme amount of will to progress in the manner that I am trying to demonstrate to you if you want to progress in the world as it is today. Yeah. And in many years to come, that might not be the case. Yeah. You know, people, lots of people might change and lots of people may be around you demonstrating how to change and it might be much easier, but at the moment, in 2014, there's going to be a, a large amount of your, uh, the exercise of your willpower to actually go through this process and you're going to need to give yourself time and love yourself through this process mm. if you're ever going to do it. But by doing that, that becomes a very beautiful part of your soul that you've developed mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that will developed under what are at times Extreme duress, shall we call it? <laughs> opposition. That becomes, in a way, you are developing things that many people who've been in the spirit world a long time, um, in sometimes better conditions, if you like, have not developed it in the same way, have they? Correct. There is, there is just, I feel passionately about the beauty of developing one's will and one's faith on earth. On earth because it does you so well for the rest of your life. Yes. Um, yeah. we, we have experienced the joys of the 2,000 years that we had in the spirit world primarily because of the exercise of our will on earth. Mm. And, and it, we had to do it under extreme conditions. And uh, when you have to do it under extreme conditions, you honour it. Yeah. And, and, un and unfortunately, there are many people on earth and in the spirit world that do not honour the exercise of their will, nor do they take responsibility for it. Mm. And that is one of the main problems that causes them to not progress. So, so these are some of the blockages, the resistances that people have towards progression. Yeah. And, and I feel that uh, you know, it's very important to understand that blockages are self-caused. Mm. They are not caused by your environment. And this is, this is where we need to take responsibility for all of the blockages that we have. It doesn't mean that we need to punish ourselves for them. <laughs> we just need to take responsibility for them. We need to see that it is the direct result of our own action yep. that blockages are occurring. And until we do, we won't take full responsibility for the changing of that block. Correct. So we'll wait for some magical cure. Exactly. The, mm. We feel that the fault is outside of ourselves and so the, you know, the alleviation of it is, yeah. should come from outside. And when we recognise that, no, 
this block is in me because of choices I'm making. I've chosen to be blocked on this issue. Yeah. Then we realise we can make a different choice, don't we? Exactly. Yeah. So such an essential thing. Yeah. And, and what I'd encourage people to do who feel blocked is to take more self-responsibility and take more action to helping their own soul unblock because they, in the end, are completely responsible for the development of their own soul. Mm. Other people can assist them and help them, but unless they are prepared to go through a process where they are willing to open up the reasons why they are suppressing, work through all of their addictions, work through all their fears, and eventually get down to the grief that causes a lot of what they're suffering, they will not grow and they will not change and they will always remain blocked. And it doesn't matter how much time you go <laughs> past, you can remain blocked for many thousands of years. And we have observed many people remain blocked for thousands of years. We have friends who were with us in the first century, in the first century life that we had, and they are still in the hells of the spirit world today because they chose to exercise their will in an unloving manner towards themselves and others and remain blocked to the truth. And so, you know, the, the, you can't say enough about exercising your will in a different direction to that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.